when I teach at, um, at Berkeley in Boston, it's like 400 students in a hall mm -hmm. and the microphone is, is down at the end of the passageway and they, they get in line to ask questions. And it's really great because there's such an air of excitement and enthusiasm. Right. And then they fire off these questions and it's just great. I have so much fun with the students because, you know, it, it's a little different from doing like a, a general masterclass at a, you know, a music store talking about equipment or, you know, talking about songwriting or whatever. These guys hone in on more yeah, the, incredible yeah. detail. The, under the microscope. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and it's, for me, that's a lot of fun because I don't always, you know, I try not to get too technical with things. I try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, I don't want to baffle people with bullshit, <laughs> basically. <laughs> of course, the other thing is I try to approach things from, the, I live in the real world. I can tell you what you need to do to, to get going and to the things that are important, the, the things that work and the things that don't work and all yeah. that stuff, you know. I think a lot of people, they um, like they want to know a lot about what the sort of extended techniques that you're doing on, on guitar, like you got this, you got this cascading effect or, you know. Mm, well, there, are, you know, I can tell you where all that comes from um, and, you know, half of it is stolen and the other half's invented by me, so, <laughs> right. you know, and like, you know, people point out stuff like, you know, oh, I can't play that song because I can't, my finger won't do that. You know what I mean? Right, like right. My, my knuckles will move both ways. And so I use that as a tool in my playing. And then someone come along and saying, I really love that song, Lewis and Clark, but I can't play the chorus because my knuckle won't do that. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I didn't think of that. It's just, a, it's just reality, you know? Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your favorite one of these techniques uh, to do like uh, to sort of throw in a song or is it kind of like you just approach each song each song separately or do, do you like oh, throwing sure. the cascading? I mean, well each each song is like a child to me you know mm -hmm. it's like I can't write another Angelina I've already written that song mm -hmm. I can't write another Endless Road because I've already written it and I'm not going to try and copy something I've done or rewrite the same song again you right. know I remember James Taylor saying that he said, you know, I've been he'd been writing songs since the '60s, and he said, I've basically rewritten the same 25 songs in each every few years. I rewrite them again as a something else, mm -hmm. you know, using the same kind of ideas, yeah. and um, and that's that's brilliant. But you can do that when you have a different story, lyric-wise, right. musically, it's a different thing, you know, and I. I can't, I'm not one of those writers who, I, oh, well, I better write a song about blah, 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 you know. It's, I've got to have a real reason to write. Something's got to click with, 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 with me and I've got to be inspired. And it's usually, uh, if I watch a movie and, and there's something in the movie or something about the film that transports me, then I'll gen if something will happen and I'll gen gen generally be able to write. In, but it has to be now. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. And uh, well, the last piece I wrote was after my, my brother Phil passed away. Sorry. And uh, I, after I'd talked with the family and, uh, you know, I was up most of the night uh, when I found out. Mm -hmm. And then I, I slept about two hours and I got up and I woke up and I was really fresh in the, in the mind. And I, I got a different view on his passing and I thought, well, there's some kind of sense of relief because he was headed down a track where his body was slowly deteriorating because he was a heavy smoker mm -hmm. and he had asthma and I noticed that he was getting frail. So he's, he, his spirit's still great, but his body's starting to let him down, you know what I mean? And I thought that's going to be a struggle, you know. And then, then he dies because he can't get, he can't breathe. He had an asthma attack and didn't survive it. And so, I saw it from a slightly different view. I thought, well, the struggle's over and he can sail on now. And that's when I, the moment I thought that, I wrote the song because uh -huh. I had that view.